Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome to April. So I was awakened this morning by this sound and I was like, what is that sound? And I got up and I realized it was the birds outside. And so I stuck my iPhone out and I just pressed record because it was extraordinary. I thought, I haven't heard this, I, I don't know when. And I just recorded them, just, I was mesmerized. And so I thought I would share that as the opening to this, because to me, this says as much about April as anything I could say as an introduction. And that is that spring is coming alive. We are in spring. We've had the spring equinox, and we're getting ready for a new moon in Aries. Happy birthday to my Aries people, by the way. If this is your month, you're getting ready for a brand new solar return. So um, we're going to have a new moon on the 5th in Aries, which is that beginning of the astrological new year. And this is the time to really start your year and start. It's It coincides with spring and it has exactly the same energy as those birds that are flirting with each other outside and they're, they're mating and getting together or the the bulbs that are coming up through the soil and they have so much energy because they have to push up through the semi-frozen soil and they can just feel the sun and they're just saying yes to themselves and we're the same. So this is the time of the year where there's an un unadulterated yes coming to us but first we have a few other things to discuss so let's get started. So we are, before we have the new moon on the 5th in April, we are, we are in the dark moon this week. And we're coming out of a time where a lot of people have felt confused, stuck, depressed, directionless, trying to find a new direction and feeling like they're flailing, like they're just underwater and, and, and call me and say, what is going on here? Well, you know, we've had, first of all, Mercury meeting up with Neptune. That does not always happen. And it's sitting here for a little while too. We still have it. And this has made communication really difficult. It's made thinking process difficult. So we've really been in this soup. We've been leaving behind self-defeating patterns. And there's an understatement to what I just said. I mean, people are really leaving behind self-defeating patterns. And I want to talk more about that. A lot of people have felt burdened by past mistakes almost like this sort of guilt-ridden, shame-ridden, you know, repetitious thinking and feeling that, you know, memories coming up of things that we, we didn't do correctly and now we just messed everything up. Um, we're coming out of a time that's been really emotionally heavy with this Mercury retrograde. And one of the things that's, that's great about having Mercury direct is now we can start to think clearly and really do our work. Whereas before we've just felt sort of burdened and felt like we couldn't think clearly. Has this been going on for you? I know it's been going on for a lot of people that I talk to. And a lot of people have been asking, you know, what has my life been about? Have I gotten off my path? Can I get back on my path? Is it too late for me? Is there even a path? I think it's all overgrown. I don't even know if there's a path anymore. Why was I born? What am I supposed to be doing? Did I get detoured? Was I dropped off here by accident? So if you've been having these thoughts and feelings, you are not alone. And I feel like it's really important moving into the April energy that if these thoughts have been coming up for you, just know you're not alone. This is very much what everyone is doing. It's like it's like all the dust has been up in the air and nothing has been settled. And there's nothing in the outside world that you can really hold on to that's very secure anymore. And I'm sure you've noticed this through watching the news and feeling your way through social media. It's just not a time when you can hook your cart to, to the star of the status quo. Because the status quo is changing because we're changing. Our consciousness is changing. The collective is changing. We are on a pretty abrupt evolutionary path right now. We're moving up and away from the dullness of not being aware 
of ourselves, not being conscious in the, in the things that we do. And so a lot of people are having a wake up call right now. And it's a good thing. It's not easy. It's not comfortable, but it is, it's a good thing. So those old structures have been crumbling and a lot of us have been feeling disoriented. We can't rely on the old ways of doing life. This is a time when we can begin to use this direct Mercury in April. And even though we're going into the dark moon this week before the new moon, and that's typically a time that feels a little bit like a tunnel, like like we just can't get anywhere. We don't see anything clearly still. and But we will when we get that new moon on the 5th. So I'm just putting that in here for you to think about and look forward to that if you can just take it easy this week, this first week in April, and and let that new moon ignite some inspiration and some fresh energy for you, it'll be much better than trying to force things or push things up until that moment because you're, it's like everybody's coming out of a coma right now. That's how it feels. So, What's good about this, you know, if the past month has felt muddled and confused um, and you've been like, I know I need to do something, but I don't have any idea what it is. Now you're going to have a clearer sense moving forward after the fifth. And you'll be able to kind of see where you've been self-defeated or felt like you've had self-defeating patterns. That's what I wanted to say. And where those self-defeating patterns in your life have trapped you. And again, you can be aware of the pattern without feeling guilty or shame. You know, like if you have a memory of how you messed something up way back when, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, five years ago, one month ago, um, just let yourself off the hook. It's time to let yourself off the hook because the consciousness is what you're looking for. It's being aware that, oh, that was a mistake and I see how I blocked myself then and I see how many other times I've blocked myself in a similar way and I keep butting my head up against a wall with that thing that I do. And what I'm telling you is this is really a time to let go of all of that self-defeating stuff. So one of the things that's up for everybody is very old assumptions are in the process of being bulldozed. And this is for everybody and everybody in a slightly different area. I know I've had a couple of conversations in the past week uh, where people are really com- coming to terms in a conscious way after really thinking it through and then having a conversation with somebody they care about, you know, I realize I have a pattern of such and such and I'd really like to change this. And these these are three ways that I would like to approach this differently. And I think that we have to have that presence of mind right now in order to let go of the assumptions that we've had because the assumptions are built into all the triggers, the things that have emotionally been bothering us this past month with the the Mercury retrograde in Pisces. It's been a very emotional time where we've just felt under it, under this sort of weight of things that don't work. We don't really know why. We keep feeling triggered. We keep going around and around in the same circles and feeling like we're three years old with the same old thing. And now it's time to to really change those assumptions. So think of one thing that you've assumed you'll never have or the one thing you think can never change for you at this point in your life. That's where bondage has been happening. That's where you've been feeling trapped or strapped down and and, um, like you can't move. And that's where you need to release yourself. And each of us has that place. That place that it, it's so old, we can't even, even remember it anymore. So the cards that I drew for April, I drew the devil, haha. I drew temperance. I drew three wands cards. Um, I have a five of wands, which is wasting your energy through struggle and competition. The Ten of Wands, which is being under the burden, under the burden of of pushing yourself, forcing, and feeling too much pressure through the ego. And um, the Knight of Wands reversed. So that's like, where are we kicking up dust, forcing things, spinning our wheels, not getting anywhere? And it's all this energy that comes through the ego or the will. So 
oppressive will and feelings of impotence or failure that are causing pressure, where are you pressuring yourself to get something done through the will that is not actually aligned with your authentic self? Where are you forcing things instead of allowing? Where do you block life and what life wants to give to you? Where are you seeing life as an opponent and, a, and something that is not wanting to give you what you want? Where are you seeing life like the parent that withheld from you? What about you do you see as crippled or broken? These are all the questions that we're needing to ask ourselves during this very heavy first week of April. Um, there's a particular pressure with Saturn meeting up with Pluto in the south node that is causing this triggering of everyone to let go of self-imposed defeating patterns. This is like realizing that you've been wearing the wrong underwear. <laughs> I had to say that. Um, really uncomfortable underwear that you just got so used to wearing you forgot they pinch. This is going to be a part of yourself that you just think that's just the way I am or that's just the way life is or that's just the way this part of my life is. So whatever place in your chart, and this is where astrology is really helpful. Astrology is one of the tools I love to use to help people free themselves from old patterns is if it's the first house and you have Saturn Pluto there pressuring you to change who you are and how you show up in the world. Literally, it could even be the body pressuring you to let go of something that is not healthy for your body. If it's in the second house, it may be, well, it could actually in the second house be a food that is not good for your body or a resource that you are hanging on to that is detrimental to you. It could be like, this is like the hoarder, you know, where you're hoarding stuff and carrying stuff around that you're meant to drop off at Goodwill and you're just not willing to do it because it makes you feel uncomfortable to have too much space around you. You need to clutter it up, okay? Or around what you value about you and your self-esteem and how you value you. Are you holding on to an old self-image that is affecting your self-esteem? Like, I can't make money. I can't do it. I can't be successful in the world. No one respects me. Those would be second house issues. Um, if you're having this conjunction on your third house, it might be, uh, who do you feel like you have to be to fit in with your your colleagues, your siblings, your community? Where are you pressuring yourself with false ideas in your mind? Where are you, where is there a mental pattern where you berate yourself and tell yourself nasty things on the sly, but you're, you're sunny to other people, you're nice to other people? This is where you're being asked to bulldoze those old ways and old patterns. If it's in the fourth house, um, you may be dealing with very old, rooted, ancestral family patterns that are causing you to feel like people in your ethnic group, people in your family group, people in my family just don't do that. We just don't go do things that make us happy. You know, we do duty. That might be something that needs to be bulldozed. If it's in your fifth house, for example, you may have a some, uh, something unhealthy that has to do with what you will do for your children or your creations or not do for your children and your creations. It may have to do with how you're allowed to uh, be exuberant in the world and creative and spontaneous and joyful. Are you allowed to have romance? This may be where you are facing a very deep level shift for the fifth house and in yourself. Something is being asked to be let go of. If it's in your sixth house, this would have to do with routines around your health and your body and what you do on a daily basis, what you're allowed, the routine ways that you, you get up and greet the day and how you work and the, the people that you work around, the people who work for you. Do you have some weird ideas around service or being served that need to be let go? Because this is the time to do it. The universe is really in support of us letting go of this stuff. The seventh house, it would be around relationships and partnerships and contracts. You know, do you twist into a pretzel for those things in ways that are unhealthy? How, you know, are there, 
ways that you are relating to others in your life that are actually truly detrimental and based on an old, old, maybe centuries old idea that you've been holding of yourself. If it's in the eighth house, this is around uh, investment ideas, money. It's around deep psychological wounds or in, in inquiry, you know, places where you may feel like, oh no, I've got to, I've got to chew this thing. I've got to, I've got a bone to chew about this. And you just have to get to the bottom of it or, or have an addiction. You know, that's, that can also be part of the eighth house is feeling like you are just willing to destroy yourself to get to the bottom of something rather than let it go. If it's in the ninth house, this is about belief systems. You know, if this is where Pluto and Saturn are asking you to restructure, you may have some belief systems you've been holding on to that do not serve you in your life. They're limiting your life expansion. They're not allowing the expansion and the growth. Um, you know, you can have an idea that it's not safe to travel on planes and you just won't do it. Or you may have a, a belief that your anxiety prohibits you from meeting new people. Or you could have a belief that um, once you say, say something, then that's final, even if you should be somebody who revisits an idea. So there's, there are endless ways that this works out. You know, again, in the 10th house, if this is where you have this conjunction, this is going to be around something around your public image, how you're showing up publicly. Perhaps everything's about appearance for you and you need to go to a more authentic part of yourself. And there's some way that, that you are holding on to a self-image that is actually very destructive to you. If it's the 11th house, what do you need to change with regard to your dreams? And how those dreams connect with the broader public and with your the whole world. Do you have a limitation there where you don't believe that your dreams fit into the world? Do you feel like you're not enough of this world to fit in? That if you if you create a dream, nobody is going to support you. No, you're not going to be supported. If it's in the twelfth house, you know this is a place of past life, past time addiction, um, the house of self undoing. Is there a part of you that just goes unconscious that needs to become more conscious now and just say no to energy that doesn't belong in your space, that doesn't belong in your world? Are you processing other people's stuff in a way that is not healthy for you? You know, how are you imprisoning yourself with um, an old behavior pattern that is truly self-defeating. So these are just some, usually I don't go through all the houses, but I thought for this it would be really helpful. And for April, just to go through some of these scenarios, because this is a really karmic time. And by karmic, what I mean is that we repeat a pattern until we become aware that we're doing it. And then we can change the pattern. If you ever saw the movie Groundhog Day, this was about a guy who basically was began to practice lucid dreaming or whether he was in different dimensions, we're not really sure, but it was a very entertaining movie in which he did the same thing over and over and he got stuck in the same day over and over again. And he eventually began to evolve and play with how he could change his pattern so that he wasn't doing exactly the same thing every day. And once you become aware that you've just been reenacting the same pattern, like a groove in an old record, you can change it. You can toss out the record. You can use a CD instead or go digital. So um, I want to talk just for a moment about temperance and the queen of coins because I got those as um, there's, you know, the burdening of will or using the will in a way that is not helpful to us. There's bondage with the devil that's about bondage and so we're really looking at how we can release ourselves from stuff that is just so old it's so dead it's just gangrene you know get rid of it and what we have here is temperance is this healing force it's angelic in nature and one thing I feel like this card tells us is that we don't have to be perfect while we're in a human body it's about tempering the light and dark inside of us. It's about letting ourselves be everything that we are. This reminds me of, as I always say, we are human mosaics. We have chips from this 
this wound and this thing that happened years ago and it's all beautiful once you put it back together into a mosaic it becomes a, a work of art and so are you you're a work of art and there is sort of the gift of grace when you recognize oh my god you know I really messed this up I really see what I was doing all these years I see that what I'm bumping up against is this old idea of me that's imprisoning me and trapped me and now I'm just going to send this one up. I'm going to send it up to the higher forces to be dissolved and released because I'm not going to use my ego and my will to beat my head against the wall any longer. I'm going to release, release this to the higher forces and let something new happen. And this is the perfect time to do this right before this new moon in Aries because new moon in Aries is all about the will, but it's about the fresh new instinct. It's it's about the, the part of us that's just like that sprout coming up through the frozen soil. It, it's a good thing, and it knows it's a good thing, and it knows it's rising toward the sun, and it wants to grow. But you can't grow if there's too many cloudy days. And so what we're doing before this new moon is we're clearing the fog away. And we're doing this by recognizing, and every single person I've talked to in the last month really does get it, they are fully aware of where they're stuck and fully aware of what they really need to let go of. And they're like, I know I keep doing this. I know I keep doing it. Well, you know. And now it's time to do that energetic release where you just scoop it all up and throw it up and let the higher forces take it over and then take a look in a new direction this month. This is a month to take a look in a new direction. Now, Jupiter is going to go retrograde. Jupiter's the expander. It's been expanding our lives since uh, October. And on the 11th, I, I believe it goes retrograde. And what this means is that we have expanded, 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 had new ideas. We're going to go new places. Our spirit is expanding. We're getting inspired. And now we get to fill in the blanks. So it's almost like we created a great big um, outline. And now we have to fill it in with all the writing and the details. And so it's going to pause and stop and gain energy and go go within and it's it's kind of like like the engines are going to just sit and build and build we're going to build up that that jupiterian energy so everything we've expanded in the last since uh, october we can begin to fill that in and take a deep breath and say okay this is what i'm going to work on and then at the end of the month we're going to have saturn and pluto retrograding and they've already given us our homework it's wherever you have that south node with uh, Saturn and Pluto on your chart. That's the area. And you know this so well, I don't even have to tell you because we've been at this for a really long time and we're very aware of what we're really tired of and what is dead and old and needs to be cut out. And the way to do that through this Queen of Coins is to look in a new direction, to know your value, just your innate value, being here as a being, you are very valuable and stop forcing yourself to do things according to old handicapped thinking. Give yourself a break. Take yourself off the hook this month and let something new come to you. So I hope you enjoyed this. This was a little bit longer than I usually do for the monthly podcast, but I just felt really excited to share this. I feel like this is an incredible time of letting go of the old, bad feeling, older than dirt patterns that we are just so ready to let go of that we almost feel like, should I even be here anymore? Is this all I get in this life? And the reason you're feeling that way is because it's old and you don't need to do it anymore. What you need to do is something new. So grab a hold of that Aries fire and I'm sending out so many happy birthdays to my Aries people because Aries is, um, you guys bring in the spring and that is a very exciting, it's a time of new beginnings, it's a time to listen to the birds, listen to the instincts of nature and get excited about new things that are wanting to sprout up in your life, inside of you. And if you're not feeling it, it may not be new, so don't force yourself to do it. 
So I hope this was helpful. I love you all. Please do check out my Understanding Empaths course, and I'll put a link below to that. And you can always reach me through my website. And uh, enjoy playing with this this interesting, this is going to be a power-packed month for everybody. So I really hope that you enjoy it. And leave me some comments below if you find there's some things really coming up for you this month. Bye-bye.